Ugh. Ugh. What's on that shelf? Pew! Three, two, one, bro. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm on the floor. Yeah. Uh, because this word, well, I'm on this part of the shelf right here and the shelf sometimes is on the floor and that's where I got to be. And it's hard to light this and look good doing it. I don't feel like this looks good on me, but here we are. So we're going to be talking about this part <clears throat> right here. This, uh, this is kind of like a little party game section a little bit. We're going to talk about cash and guns. Just got some dust on it, which means we haven't played it recently. Because it's it's kind of a, you know, it's good. It's from four to eight players, and it's really fun. Um, at a party, if you want to be really light and loose, you kind of have to be careful about where you play this, because there are fake little uh, styrofoam or foam weaponry. Um, this game is really fun. This game is, is all about kind of bluffing. Because you have... Uh, guns and you don't always have a bullet in the chamber so sometimes you're gonna fire a blank you know just kidding or sometimes you're actually gonna shoot somebody um and it's all about kind of playing chicken you're wondering like if someone has pointed a gun at you you have to then decide whether or not you're gonna stand up and believe that this person is bluffing or you're going to duck for cover and basically take yourself out of the round. Now, the reason you don't want to duck for cover is because the only way to collect money and loot is if you stand up and stick around. Uh, you don't scramble out of the way. So you have to stay standing to get loot. But if you stay standing and you get shot, guess what? You don't get no loot because you're just bleeding. So it's really about kind of playing your friends and seeing like, you wouldn't dare shoot me. We've been friends for 30 years. And he's just like, I'm going to shoot you because we've been friends for 30 years. Stuff like that. Um, it's just a lot of fun. It's super light and silly. Um, and it's funny because you get, actually get kind of mad. You're like, how dare you shoot me? I, I'm, I'm actually legitimately mad over this fake shooting right now. How dare you? I'm going to pretend shoot you back. That is Cash and Guns. This game here, Quits and Wagers. Is another Fantastico one. We played this at MeepleCon with the Dice Tower boys. They put on their own versions of Wits and Wagers that are really great. Um, it's fun because it's a trivia game, but it's a gambling game too. It's not just about who's the smartest. Um, being smart helps, but if you have a friend that's really smart about some subject or other, and a question is somehow related to something you think they'd know, you can bet that they have the right answer or the closest answer and win money all the same. So it's not about who knows best. It's about who can bet the best and spend their money most wisely. Uh, it's great because all the trivia answers are really simple. They're just a number. Uh, and you will rank the number, the answers from lowest number to highest number. And then people place their bets. Whoever's closest without going over price is right style uh, wins. And they'll get a little bonus for having the correct answer. Then people who vote on that will get money and payouts and so forth. It's a really fun uh, game from uh, Northstar Games, which I knew but was paranoid about and, you know, double-checked anyway. Next is Telestrations. This is where you get your drawing on. This is um, really fun because it's basically telephone. If you remember playing telephone or you whisper, you're like, dog butts. And then someone said, like, dog's back. And then, you know, whatever. That's a terrible example of telephone, but it turns into something inappropriate or stupid. Um, and by the time you get around the circle, the message is completely different than how it began. And it's really fun in Telestrations to take that concept and put it into drawing when like things are going to go awry, no matter what you try to do. Uh, and it's just a really fun game. So what will happen is someone gets a prompt. Uh, it'll be the white house and they'll try to draw the white house. And then the next person who gets your board that I drew, I drew the, my version of the white house they see the picture and they have to try to put in words what they think the prompt was. So they're like uh, mansion. And then the next person sees mansion as their prompt. They're like, all right, I can draw a mansion. They draw a big thing. And then someone says like 
Scarface because they think it's like, you know, they think there's a pile of cocaine somewhere in the drawing and it just gets weirder and weirder. It's really good for a laugh. I love to play this one, not for points or anything. It's just, you just doing round after round and giggling. Uh, Telestrations is a great time. Uh, another good one for a group of friends. Now this last one is Cranium. Cranium is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> this is... Um, this game has a lot of sentimental value for me. Uh, I love it. Nick gets all sorts of stress about it and hates it, but he will play it on occasion. Um, it's a great game because it just mixes like everything into one. It's got trivia. It's got, you know, your humming songs and people have to guess it. It's got, uh, charades. It's got Pictionary. It's just a bunch of games crammed into one. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Now, this version, Cranium Wow, I got because I played with a friend of mine. She's uh, very important to me. And um, we used to play this back in the day. This is back before I was like a board gamer, a proper board gamer, or anything like that. And I had just so many fond memories of Cranium and specifically this version that I went out and bought it uh, and have had it for a long, long time. And it's stuck with me ever since. I'll always hang on to this copy uh, for its sentimental value. And occasionally we'll play Cranium. And, like, I still love it. I think it's really fun. I really do. Um, I like all the, the craziness. And you're on teams. And you're, and you're kind of playing your friends. So it's a great one for a party. Uh, especially if you're not ready to, like, delve into Terraforming Mars. Maybe we'll start off with some Cranium. Uh, it's something familiar. You feel safe. You feel uh, comfortable. And then we'll... We'll peek behind the curtain a little bit and, and suck you into the world of bird masks and board games. And I don't know, I, you know, it can get weird. That's all I'm saying. All right. So anyway, that's what's on this portion of the shelf. It's down low because we don't play these games as often. But I just don't want you games to think that that's a negative reflection upon you. I love you just the same. That's why you're here. You have not been cold yet because we're not cold hearted people like other folks, man. Ugh. Anyway, that's what's on this portion of the shelf. If you want to see us play any of these games, let us know, and we'll give them a, a, a consideration, and we'll maybe play them at twitch.tv slash thebrothersmurf someday. Uh, it'd be fun to play some party games. I really do want to do, like, wits and wagers with the audience. I'm trying to work out the best way to do that, but uh, that's something that we really would like to do sometimes. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Y'all are wonderful. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. It's hump day. Am I right? I don't know. Uh, and we'll see you next time in a different part of this shelf. Cha! If you like this video so much, then you should go and click subscribe. And if you want to play some awesome games, then baby, you should check Restoration Games. Oh yeah, and this game. Don't, this game sucks.